Hey gun people, good Texas morning, got a little fog out here, kind of tell the fog's kind of setting out there, <laughs> horses are like dude you gonna feed us, <laughs> I haven't gone out and given them a little green yet, <laughs> I'll get you guys a great, I gotta do a video for YouTubies, alright, <laughs> so let's uh, let's talk about the booking procedure. Because a lot of people don't, uh, I don't know if I've ever gone over what happened. Somebody asked me a question about uh, the booking procedure for a cop on how cops book people and what happens when you arrest, etc. I mean, I guess it's just kind of common knowledge for me, but and most cops is common, but I guess if you've never been through the process, you don't know. So what happens when a cop arrests you? Well, first he's going to arrest you, he's going to handcuff you. A lot of people think you got to read your rights. We, we, you don't have to read somebody their rights unless you're going to question them about a crime. So if I don't really want to talk to you and I don't want to get a statement and I don't want to go in an interview with you, I don't have to read your rights. Now people will sit in the back seat, you didn't read my rights, you got to let me go. Reading your rights and being arrested are, are really independent. Your rights tell you you don't have the right to talk to me and, and you can request a lawyer and you don't, you don't have to self-incriminate, but it doesn't matter it has nothing to do with whether or not you're going to be arrested and booked and charged. So now if I get a statement and I don't read your rights, now it comes into play on were you in custody and was there interrogation because it's a two-pronged test and I go over that on, on the Miranda rights, the two-pronged test. You have to have custody and then you have to have interrogation about the crime. Interrogation is not what's your name, what's your date of birth. That, that's not interrogation to, to make you a criminal or to confirm that you committed a crime. So that, that doesn't fall in a Miranda. I don't have to read your rights to ask your name, address, date of birth, etc. Now if I ask your address and was there a dead body there and you have blood on you, now I get into incriminating statements and now if I didn't read your rights I'm going to lose that statement if I have custody. Custody and interrogation without either one of those. That's why a lot of cops will be like, you're free to leave, you're not in custody. Because then I don't have to Mirandize you, I can talk to you, I can elicit incriminating responses, and I can use those against you because I can argue you are not in custody. And without custody and interrogation, Miranda doesn't matter. So the booking procedure is when you arrest, a lot of cops will just, I always read, spit out the rights real quick when I arrested you. Because if we got into a conversation, or after I got to jail and I dealt with you for an hour, an hour and a half, you may make statements or we may make comments or I might throw in questions that I could use against you that are incriminating and if I didn't read your rights I wouldn't be able to use those later. So most cops standard will just spit out the rights as soon as they arrest you and it's actually a ploy on the government because if you're in the middle of fighting and I'm cuffing you and I'm throwing you in a car and I'm reading your rights I can say I read you your rights and you were advised and now I can use anything against you. When in fact, I mean, the, the intent of Miranda is a person makes a conscious decision, hey, I'm going to question you to find out things so I can charge you and to use against you, and I want you to cooperate, and if you have nothing to hide, you'll tell me, but I want your cooperation. And then if I can get you to talk voluntarily, after you've been advised and you know that you can request a lawyer and you don't have to talk, then I can use that. So by, by circumventing that and reading it in the heat of the battle, and the heat of the moment of aggressive, throwing you in a car, you're going to jail, you're kind of confused, I can spit those rights out immediately and then as time goes on, by the time the booking procedure is over an hour, an hour and a half later, now I've got you talking, we're talking, etc. and you've kind of forgot those rights because the light's going on. Is it illegal? It's not illegal by the law. The courts have said it's okay. Is it right and fair? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, you can decide for yourself. So, once I arrest you and get you in a car, normally cops will put over the radio, one in custody, en route to the jail. And they'll have codes or whatever. And when you go to the jail in California, and I don't know if all states are like this, in California, you must book somebody in the jail in the county they were arrested. So, you know, if a guy has a warrant down in L.A. 
and I'm way up north in Sacramento, and I arrest him for a Los Angeles warrant, I have to book him in the Sacramento jail because that's where I arrested him. And then he has to be extradited down to the county where he's at. Now the extradition is pretty much automatic, but it takes a couple days. Now when I'm working in two different counties like Yolo County and Sacramento County is right next to each other, Placer County, Sac any of those surrounding counties, a lot of people that were arrested had Sacramento warrants. So to save time and money and all that, if we arrested you in a different county, we would say, hey dude, you got a Sacramento warrant, they're probably going to cite you out because it's busy and they got too many prisoners. So if I take you to SAC jail, you're probably going to spend one night in jail and get a ticket, notice to appear and you'll get to release. If I book you in Placer County where I arrested you, you're going to have to stay here, they're going to have to put you in front of a judge, you're going to have to do the extradition process. That may take up to two days. If it's Friday, it could take all the way to Monday or Tuesday. You're going to spend all that time in jail. Then they're going to transport you to Sacramento jail so you can go in front of the court in their county, and then they're going to give you a ticket and you're going to be out. So we can bypass this wait if you wave and say, just book me in Sacramento. Then I can take you across county lines and book you in a different county. So that will save some time. It, the only reason that I, I do that normally is when you're, in, you're, in, you're moving around in so many jurisdictions, you got different jails. Every jail has a different procedure. Every jail has different paperwork. Uh, you know, so you, you kind of get used to where you book all the time. You know, I mean, I, I book so much in Sac County and Yolo County that I, I just know how they go. Solano County is a little different. I didn't do a whole bunch there. But when you book in a county you're at, you know the procedure. You know how to get into Sally Port, et cetera. So, and, and now I'm going to talk about that. So let's say I'm booking somebody in Sacramento County Jail. I arrest them in Sac County. They got a, a warrant, and I'm booking them in Sac County Jail. So I drive them to the jail. Now, you got to realize Sacramento is like 950 square miles. So, I mean, if I'm in one area of the county and I arrest somebody, it can take me almost 30, 45 minutes just to get to the jail to start the booking procedure. So it, it pulls you out of the loop for quite a while when you book somebody because now I've got to drive there. I've got to do the paperwork, I've got to search you, I've got to do the medical clearance, I've got to go through all the procedures. Then when I'm done, I've got to fill out the paperwork. And then, normally, I would just go back out on the streets and do it, and then we would do our paperwork the next day because we were working overtime at night getting all our hooks and books. And then the next day, we'd go in and we'd catch up on all the paperwork. So if I had four or five arrests, I'd just start doing my reports on those four or five arrests and get them turned in. But that night, you have to do what's called, when I book you into jail, well, let me get back to booking procedure. So, I, I get you in a car, we're resting, and I drive 30, 45 minutes, I get to the jail, and I go up to Sally Port, there's a garage door there, there's a button, hey, go ahead, uh, yeah, I'm in Sackcats, uh, one in custody for auto theft, uh, cooperative. Now, we always say either cooperative or uncooperative. If we say cooperative, the jail kind of leaves you alone, figure you can get them in, no problem. If you say uncooperative, they send out the meat squad, and, and they come out with a camera and they come out with the four big dudes and they got their gloves on because they figure they're going to get bloody and it's not a pleasant experience. So if you've got a, 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 an in custody being a jerk and fuck you and spitting and doing all this bullshit, then when I pull up to jail, I go, one in custody for, you know, gang related, homicide, whatever, and uncooperative. And they're like, okay. They open a sally port, the garage door goes in, I pull into the, the underground carport area, it closes, and then I have to lock him up, I have to put my guns in the trunk, get my knives, can't bring weapons into the jail, so I'm pulling off my ankle, my vest gun, my regular gun, pepper spray, I'm dumping all my shit. Now some people will let you bring pepper spray in jail, others don't. They don't want any weapons. So then, you know, if I got a boot knife or if I got a knife in my pocket, you got to put all that shit in the, in the, in the trunk of your car, close your car, and then you get your custody, you're in custody out. Now if he's cooperative, then I drag him out, he's handcuffed, and I bring him in, and I start the booking procedure. If he's uncooperative, I leave him in the car, I wait for the meat squad, and then here they come, and, and they get him out of the car. They open the door and they go, look dude, we're being videotaped, if you assault us, if you resist at all, we're telling you, he's already said you're uncooperative, we're going to do this, that, and the other. And the guy will be like, fuck you, go kick your ass. And then, and then it's on, like Donkey Kong, boom. He's on the ground, he's snatched, he's grabbing, they're carrying him in. One guy's got one foot each, two guys got the arms, and they're carrying him in. And then if he's still being a jerk, they strap him in the Hannibal Lecter chair 
with the face mask and he's strapped around and we roll him around the chair until we book him. So that's just to start the booking procedure. So now I've driven there, I've gotten in there, I've done all my weapons, I'm ready to get in there. Now I get inside the door inside the jail. My weapons are outside in the parking lot or in the underground secure area so my car's in there. Now you go inside the jail. Then when you go inside the jail there's booking areas and I mean depending on when you're booking you know if we make arrest Friday Saturday night we'll walk in there and there'll be 20 people booking so there's only so many little tables that you can kind of write out and they got all the forms on the wall so you know if I'm booking for drugs I got to do the drug form if I'm doing a DRE I got to grab that form I got to do the in custody if it's a felony I got to do the probable cause sheet so felonies you have to do a, a little bit more report because a judge has to review it in order to charge him with a felony. Misdemeanors, I can just put in a little bitty comment on a booking sheet, he did so and so, blah blah blah, probable cause arrest or war warrant, whatever, and be done. But if it's a felony, I gotta go into a little more detail, I gotta get established a little bit more probable cause so the judge, when he reviews it, says, okay, I think this guy committed a felony, I'll hold him. And, and I've been called back because I got lazy or I left something out that I meant to put in and I'm at home, and a couple hours later, they go, hey, man, we sent this to the judge. The judge told us to release this guy because there's not enough in a probable cause. So if you want him released, we're going to release him. If you want him held, you need to come back and add or redo the probable cause. Like, Shit! <laughs> Get up, drive all the way back to the jail. I mean, I'm on overtime, so I'm getting paid. So, I mean, but, you know, when you're working a lot of hours doing a lot of overtime, you just don't want to do that. You're just tired of worry. You just you want some downtime. So I got to go all the way back to jail and I got to redo the probable cause, make sure it's right. And depending on the judge, some judges will sign shit easy, they don't care. Some judges want a whole bunch of shit. So it's the luck of the draw. So normally you put more so it doesn't matter what, what judge you get. You know you're going to pass pretty much all the judge's standards. So once I bring him in there and there's all these people sitting around booking and, you know, there's the, you know, the highway patrolmen with all their drunks because that's pr pretty much all they arrest is their drunk drivers or speeding with no license or some shit. And so they got all their guys. And then you got, you know, the task forces. You got your drug task force, your gang task force guys. They're booking. And then you got the patrol guys who are going out and arresting people for domestic violence, et cetera. So it's like, you know, you got SAC Sheriff, SAC PD. Uh, there's all kind of probation officers. If they violated somebody, they may bring, bring somebody in. Parole officers may be bringing some. So you've got all these agencies, and you're like, shit, all right, now i got to find a spot to do my paperwork. Because you're just in the door of the process. From there, after you fill out all the paperwork, you get all your paperwork done, you, you check your guy, you make sure you don't have anything, you're checking him for weapons, drugs, etc., because you don't want him bringing nothing in. And then if they find something, they're going to kick you back out, and you got to redo the paperwork, you got to add the charges for bringing into the jail. So, you know, we tell the book, you look good. You got any drugs on you, you got to tell me now, we'll throw it away, we'll do what we need to do. But you don't want to bring it in there because then it's a felony, you're trying to bring drugs in there. Even though the DA ain't going to charge and it's going to be dismissed and nobody cares, we try to scare the guy because we don't want him bringing drugs in. So then, after you get all this paperwork done and everything, then you have to go on and get a nurse. There's a nurse on duty, you know, sometimes we call them a vampire because they'll draw blood for, for uh, drugs or alcohol. So then you have to go through see the nurse. So you bring them in there and they're handcuffed. And some nurses will be like, take the handcuffs off. And I'm like, eh, you know what? I don't want to take the handcuffs off this guy. So if he's a, if he's a bad guy and I don't want to take the handcuffs off until I got, I'm insecure because I know he'll grab the nurse or he'll start fighting, then sometimes they'll let you do it. Sometimes they'll bring in a few people to take it off. So then there's that thing. And then when the nurse checks them and she looks, and then they're going to cry about, I've had this toothache for three weeks, and the nurse will look at that and go, you know what, he's kind of got an abscess, that might be infected. I need a medical clearance. So the nurse can say at any point, I want a medical clearance. If she wants a medical clearance, and all the, all the arrestees want medical clearance, because then they get to go to the ER, they get to lay around, it delays their time in there, they got some cop babysitting them, so they love to go to the hospital. So they're all complaining about I'm hurt and I got a heart attack and my back hurts. And some of it may be true, but, you know, they, they know the game because they've been arrested 20 freaking times. So it's, it's, it's to their benefit to get to go to a hospital. So they're always complaining to the nurse. The good nurses can figure it out. They know them. They look through the file and they're like, nah, you'll be all right. Book them. But if the nurse says, I'm going to need a medical clearance on him. You know, we had to use force. His arm's hurt and he's saying he can't move his arm. Might be out of socket. All right. 
Need a mayor clinch. Shit. Now I got to get all my paperwork. I got to grab him. I got to leave, put him back in the car, put my guns, knives, everything back on, drive to the freaking hospital, wait at the hospital because he's not a priority. There's emergency because we go to the emergency room. There's real emergencies there of people dying and cutting and shots fired and all kind of other bullshit. So they're going to get treated before the cops sitting there with some guy just going to jail, complaining of a shoulder injury. So now I'm at the hospital for two or three hours, usually on overtime, you know, getting paid 50, 60 bucks an hour or whatever. So now the government taxpayers is paying me to sit here and babysit this guy. Meanwhile, there's four other cops in front of me who have had to take their medical guys there before me. So they're going to be seen before me. So I'm waiting there for three or four hours. I have somebody else watching. I'm drinking coffee. I'm bullshitting with the nurses. You know, whatever. So then after I get my medical clearance, the doctor sees him, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, we'll take x-rays. They spend all this freaking money doing all this work up. And then they go, okay, he's cleared. They sign his thing, and I got a clearance. Then I go back to the jail, go back to the Sally Port, one male cooperative, you know, blah, blah, blah. He lets me in, take my guns off, undo my stuff, then bring him back inside. Now I've got all my paperwork done, so now I just go straight to the nurse's station. And I go, okay, got a medical clearance. You saw him before. Okay, well, I have to see him again, and she has to check the paperwork. She has to go through all her things, and there's people lined up, and people are waiting to book, and you're like, oh, shit. All right, so then after she medical clears, then you have to get him in the jail. So then after I get the medical clearance and the nurse clearance, then I have to go and I stand in this line. And there's a little sally port area where they search everybody. So you're waiting out here with your custody and there's the deputies and all they do is search. And they normally have the new guys search him because they want to teach him how to search and how not miss things. And they usually have an FTO standing over him, training him, field training officers, FTO. And he's watching him saying, you know, make sure and check the feet. So then they have to take their shoes off. They look at the bottom of feet, take their socks off, search them. They may have them drop their pants. If, they, if they're arrested for weapons or drugs, then they get a strip search. Then they have to take them to a different room, a private room, and they have to have two people in there, and they have to strip them down completely to do a search. If it's female, you got to get two female deputies. So then after we get them searched and everything, then they're like, okay, we'll take them. Then they're in the jail, and then we're free, and then I can leave. Then I go back out of the car, put all my shit on, guns, knives, etc., then drive out of the sally port, and usually the night's over. I mean, it, it's, it's difficult to book a lot of people. Now, if you're doing it quick and you get a good process and there's not a lot of people and you don't need a medical clearance, I can get somebody booked probably through all that process within 15, 20 minutes once I get there, if everything goes good. Go in there, I have my paperwork while I'm sitting there, I've already got it done. As soon as I get there, I grab them out. I bring them in. I go straight to the nurse. Nurse says no issue. Checks them, clears them. They search them. They put them in. 15, 20 minutes, I can probably get out of there on a good night. But most of the time, you're looking an hour, hour and a half, two hours to book somebody in jail. So people are like, damn. And that's why when we're out there trying to catch real bad guys, and you got these freaking highway patrolmen arresting people for freaking traffic tickets, you're just like, Dude, you're doing all this bullshit over traffic. We're out here arresting people for serious felonies, violent knives, I mean, stabbings, uh, gang, I mean, all kind of shit. And you're doing fucking this bullshit. So as you get into higher crimes, you look back at the lower. I'm not saying those guys aren't needed. They're no good. I'm just saying I just don't like traffic shit. I think it's a bullshit system. I think most of your state cops, whether it's Texas State Police or the California, whatever, they're all into their freaking tickets and stats to justify more officers so they have to write so many tickets, they have to tow so many cars, they have to do all this shit, and, and just ties up the system. And it's kind of like, once you've really worked some bad cases, I mean, who wants to mess with that bullshit? You think I want to get tied up on some traffic? You know, a lot of people be like, why don't you detectives? I saw this detective in an unmarked car, saw a guy run right through a red light, and he didn't even stop him. You got a complaint, and then they're calling, and sorry, go, hey, man, somebody saw you, they got your plate, they said you watched the guy run a red light. Well, yeah, I saw him run a red light, but I didn't give a shit. I mean, shit, I'm on my way to do a felony arrest or a search warrant for some shit, you know, child porn, kidnapping, something major, and you want me to stop some dude because he ran a red light in front of me? Well, all right, <laughs> I mean, it, it is what it is. So... That's the booking procedure for one jail. Now, Yolo County booking in Yolo is a little bit different. You pull in, there's like eight or 10 cop cars parked there. You wait in your car and they don't even let you into the searching and to the nurse area. 
until you're ready. So you go up to the little port, you do your paperwork, you sign it in, and then there's a little speaker there, they just yell out, okay, so-and-so, so-and-so, and then you, you grab your detainee and you go in. So you have time to sit in your car, and you're doing your paperwork, and your gun's in your car, and a custody's car, and you grab them, you get them in there. So it's a little bit quicker at YOLO than it is Sacramento. But then Sacramento has, you know, freaking, I don't know, two, 5,000 cops, whatever, you know, between 1,000, 1,200, SAC PD, SAC Sheriff, probation, parole, task forces, I mean, all the other agencies that go there, you, you got a lot more arrestees, a lot more people, so it's a bigger process. And each place is different. Solano, when I was booking in Solano, it's a little bit different. We were at the base, we'd have to book somebody down there, or when I was working in Solano County. So booking in Solano is a little bit different. Um, not much, but most procedures are the same. Secure your weapon, you got to get into a secure area, Sally Port area, secure all your weapons, get your in custody in there, do the paperwork. I don't know if all agencies or, or, or jails require medical clearance. Normally they have a nurse there. You get your medical clearance to make sure there's no complaint of pain, no major issues, no infections. Uh, you know, I mean, we get people who are shooting up drugs and they got these oozing pussy things. Sometimes they'd send us some medical clearance, sometimes they'd look at it and go, Man, you got to stop shooting up on those same holes. You're getting infected. And they'd book them anyway. So it depends on the nurse. It depends on, you know, if the nurse is in a good mood, if, you, if you're if you messing around with the nurse and smiling and being nice, or if you're in there, hey, come on, I'm kind of lazy. i got to go. Then the nurse will be, like, screwing you over because everybody's got to flex on their position. And, I mean, that's the booking procedure. Good, bad, and different, that's pretty much how it goes. Is it worth it? I mean, there's so much money and waste that people have no clue where their tax dollars go and I mean it's just the, it, it's limitless on how much money is spent and wasted that people have no clue that it would be very easy to streamline and make this quicker and better and you know what it, I, I don't know maybe there's no easy answers but that's I, I've never really done the booking procedure so I figured I'd go over the booking procedure and hey there's Mr. Romeo down there Romeo <laughs> All right, we'll end that there.